Time now for another candidate spotlight this evening. And this time we turn to the 2024 presidential race because the field of candidates for the upcoming primary continues to grow. And while I know you viewers and supporters of this program know that I fully support Donald J. Trump, I also think it's important to bring as much information to you as possible about all the candidates so you can make a better informed decision on who you think should be president and vice president moving into 2024. Plus, don't you think it's always a good idea to have discussions about differences in policies and opinions? It's called civics, remember? We used to all have those classes in high school back in the 90s and 80s and 70s. We don't anymore, but we need to. We need to be (laughs) civil with one another and discuss our differences. And that brings us to our candidate tonight, the youngest man to throw his hat in the ring for POTUS, Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek made his name as an American entrepreneur, founding the pharmaceutical company Roviant Sciences in 2014, which focused on applying technology. He served as CEO there until 2021, during which time he appeared on the cover of Forbes magazine for his work to save a drug that fights against Alzheimer's. What a great cause. After stepping down from his CEO position early 2021, he co-founded Strive Asset Management, which quickly surpassed $500 million in assets just three months after launching. What I'm saying is, it's a smart guy. So whether you like him, love him, hate him, or indifferent, you got to admit his backstory is very impressive. And to me, he and his family really, really show the American dream. His family immigrating here legally, all very serious about education, Vivek shined in high school and later in college, and then went on, as I said, to build multi-billion dollar companies. And now, at 37 years old, is it? He's running for president of the United States. Again, you've got to admit, that's pretty cool, don't you think? He's also been getting a lot of attention since he launched his campaign because of the way he handles the mainstream media. <laughs> and let's just say, you know I'm no fan of theirs. They're always trying to get one over on him or anyone that gets in front of the camera with them. But um, they haven't had good success when it comes to trying to manhandle the VEC. Watch this. Well, this as a scientist? Well, there's, there's two X chromosomes if you're a woman, an X and a Y. That means there's you're a, a man. Lot so there's a lot of scientific research out there. There's a lot of scientific research out there that says gender is a spectrum. Chuck, I, I respectfully disagree. Gender dysphoria for most of our history, all the way through the DSM-5, has been characterized as a mental health disorder. And I don't think it's compassionate to affirm that. I think that's cruelty. When a kid is crying out for help, mm-hmm. what they're asking for is, you got to ask the question of what else is going wrong at home? What else is going wrong at school? Let's be compassionate and get to the heart of that, rather than playing this game as though we're actually changing right. our medical understanding I, for the last I, I go 100 back years. To this. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate. I'm not saying you Without me regarding views, you as a black man, but me regarding you as a fellow citizen. That you're That's sitting what I think here, we whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me whatever ethnicity about I'm, I'll what tell it's you. like to be black Whatever in ethnicity I'm, I'm I'll tell you what I am. I'm an Indian American. I'm proud of it. But I think we should have this debate. Black, white, doesn't matter. I think we should have this debate. On the content of the ideas. Do it, you should do it in an honest way and in a I fair way. And what you're doing is not an honest and fair way. Okay? We appreciate you coming on. With due respect, Don, I look forward to continuing that conversation. And we all know how Don Lemon's career ended up. Uh, I want to welcome to the program for the first time tonight in our candidate spotlight, Vivek Ramaswamy, a 2024 Republican presidential candidate. Vivek, can I just tell you, because I've been in this industry 30 years now, and um, there's not too many folks that can go up against the Chuck Todds and the Don Lemons and fire back with not only the facts and truth, but the confidence in which you did. And that's one of the main reasons I had my producers reach out, because no matter what folks think, and no matter if they're back in Trump or DeSantis or whatever, the things you're saying and the way you're going about it, to me, is really inspiring. So thank you, sir, and welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I think that in order to actually advance our agenda in the Republican Party, in the conservative movement, we too have to embrace open debate. That's going to make our movement better, it's gonna make our country stronger, and I'm happy to have already played a role in our first 10 weeks in this race in helping define our agenda. Now, as I said, you're young, I hope I got the age right. Uh, Do you think that's gonna hurt you or help you in this race? Because I don't think we've had a 37 year old run in, I don't know that I can ever remember. (laughs) Yeah, well, I I am actually the first ever millennial to run for US president as a Republican. I think that's a good thing. It's actually one of the reasons I'm in this race. My wife asked me and we talked about it, Aren't we sure I'm going to be better at this 20 years from now? But we actually decided to do this now because our reason for being in this race is to pass on the American dream to the next generation. Mm. Answer that question of what it means to be an American. 
I do think we're in the middle of this national identity crisis. Yes. At the same time, I think our nation is just going through a version of adolescence. We're a little young, figuring out who we're really going to be when we grow up. But I don't think we have to be some nation in decline. I don't think we have to be Rome. I think we're just growing up. And so as a young person, I think I'm helping reach that next generation. And I'm confident that our best days can still be ahead of us if we advance the America First agenda with first principles and moral authority, not just vengeance and grievance. That's why I'm in this. See, when I hear you speak like that and I see you take these anchors and these talk show hosts to task, it really does reaffirm, because I am a different generation than you, that we are not lost with the Gen Zers and the millennials. Because let's face it, a lot of folks from my generation and the boomers and above, right, 50 and above, all look at the other generations and go, oh, God help us, where are we going to end up? But then that's another reason I wanted you on is so people see and also your family and your background. I mean, your parents immigrated legally, as I said, from what, India, and you, they, they really stressed education and you guys love America and you're living the American dream. And I think so many millennials and Zers today are being poisoned by the left and told this country's horrible. You're never going to achieve the American dream. And you're a perfect example of no, get your facts right. That's right. My concern is if I had been born 20 years later, my dream might not have been possible in the same way because I would have been taught to see myself as a victim rather than somebody who says hardship isn't the same thing as victimhood. So I want to teach that next generation. I want to lead by example. I also think as a first generation American, even though I think that more people like my parents, if they love this country and follow the rules and enter through the front door, should be able to come to this country. That also means we say no unapologetically to anyone whose first act of entering this country breaks the law, because that too is what it means to be an American. And so one of the things I'm able to do in this race is I'm able to go even further than Donald Trump did with the America First agenda because I'm doing it as a millennial, gotcha. because I'm doing it as a first generation that's American. That's a good point. That's a good because point. Because I'm grounded in principle. And yeah. That's why I'm in the race too. I love that you're all on board with the America First agenda and you do not hide about it. Thank you. Um, you bring up Trump. I'd like to show you a Truth Social post he just put out about you. You may or may not have seen it. It just posted a little bit ago. It's the nicest one I've seen him say anything about any of the candidates running against him. And this one's, this one's pretty good. Um, I'm pleased to see that Vivek Ramaswamy is doing so well in the most recent Republican primary polls. And he goes on to talk about that you're getting close to tying with Mike Pence. Um, obviously, he gives a little rip on Ron de Sanctimony, so we don't have to go there. But he's really bragging you up for how well you're doing and that people are appealing or you're appealing to them and our movement. And so I'm going to ask you this because I asked Larry Elder and I think uh, the other candidate, any candidate we have on, I asked this. Do you think this is because of where the polling's at, an audition for vice president? Or are you really believing you can get the nomination for president in the primary? I'm absolutely running for president of the United States. I do think that it has to be an outsider, okay? A professional politician, a career politician, I don't think is gonna get the job done of dismantling the administrative state, of declaring independence from communist China. So President Trump and I are aligned on policy we're both outsiders. We know each other. I think we have a deep mutual respect for one another. Mm -hmm. But I'm in this race because I want to build on his foundation to go even further. Ronald Reagan did this well in the 1980s by doing it based on principles and moral authority. Right. And, and just to be really honest, I think Donald Trump would say the same thing. America first does not belong to Trump. No. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people of this country. Yes. We have to remember that and say, how do we actually go further with that agenda and unite the country, not going towards some national divorce, but leading a national revival. And especially when I think about younger Americans, that next generation, that's who we all care about the most. I think I'm best positioned to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to build on Trump's foundation. I would take his advice. It's going to take all of us to do this together. I'll take him as an advisor if I'm successful. But I think it's about the country, not about any one of us. That's the way I look at this. Vivek Ramswamy, thank you so much. And we're both Buckeyes, so you got one up right there, sir, as well. I grew up in Archibald by Toledo. Thank you, oh, sir. Awesome. I'm yep. glad to hear that. There's the thank website, you. Vivek2024.com, if you want to learn more about his bid for POTUS. Thank you, sir. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Yep.